Alerted by Ghost's whimpers, Ed finds John's body in Castle Black's courtyard along with Davos Seaworth and several of John's friends. They take John's body into his quarters for safekeeping. Ed quickly realizes from John's stab wounds that Thorne was likely behind the murder. On Davos's advice, Ed frees and brings in Ghost. Davos later starts to create a plan to take on Thorn. Knowing that they are outnumbered and need help from the people in debt to John, Ed leaves Castle Black, most likely to track down Tormund and bring him and the wildlings back to aid them. Ed instructs his fellow brothers to lock the door and not let anyone inside until he returns. Ed manages to locate Tormund and they lead the wildlings back to Castle Black just when the mutineers are on the verge of slaughtering John's loyalists. 1-1 smashes the door down and Ed confronts Thorn, naming him and the mutineers as the true traitors for betraying their Lord Commander. After Thorn and Ollie are restrained by wildlings, Ed orders the mutineers locked in the cells for their treachery. Ed leads Tormund to John's body, and is later present with Davos, Tormund, and John's friends when Melisandre attempts to revive John the same way Thoros revived Beric Dondarrion six times. When the ritual appears to fail, Ed leaves the room with the rest in disappointment, seconds before John awakens. When Davos leads the resurrected John into the courtyard, Ed embraces his friend, again quipping that his eyes are not blue. Ed is later present at the hanging of the traitors led by Alice or Thorn. After the execution, Ed suggests that they burn the bodies. John hands his knight's watch cloak over to Ed as John verbally gives him control of Castle Black. Thereafter, Ed becomes the acting Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. While John packs his things, Ed chastises him for abandoning the Watch, since those who betrayed and murdered him have been dealt with, but John, still traumatized, refuses to listen. Ed reminds John that the Watch's vows are meant for life, to which John counters that he has already given his life. A horn sounds and Ed and John run outside to see John's sister, Sansa Stark, arrive with Brienne of Tarth and Podrick Payne. He witnesses John and Sansa embrace after five years of separation. Later, Ed eats with John, Sansa, Brienne, Podrick, and Tormund, apologizing to Sansa for the food's poor quality in comparison to that of Winterfell, and appearing slightly amused at Tormund's admiration for Brienne. John receives a letter from Ramsay Bolton, and Ed listens as John and Sansa read it aloud, where Ramsay demands Sansa's return on threat of harming John and his friends. Ed shows visible signs of anger at Ramsay's threats. Ed later attends a war council with John, Sansa, Davos, Brienne, Podrick, and Tormund, remaining silent while listening to John, Sansa, and Davos's plans for their upcoming battle with Ramsay. As they prepare to leave, Ed hugs John one last time, wishing him good luck. John jokingly asks Ed not to knock the wall down while he's gone. Once they have left, a brother asks Ed's permission to close the gate addressing him as, Lord Commander. It takes Ed a few moments to remember that John named him Acting Lord Commander, and he gives the order to, close the bloody gate. 